Some of the best grapes in Southern California are grown in the Temecula Valley. And we're going to go to one of the wineries on the D. Portola Road, and that's the Oak Mountain Winery. They are known for growing some of the best varieties of grapes in the area. They also do special events like winery weddings, corporate parties, cooking classes, and today we're going to go to a special blending class. Hi, I'm Valerie from Oak Mountain Winery. Tonight we're having our Valentine's Day blending party. So everybody is doing their own private blends of wine. You can see they're enjoying it already. And when they're done, we're going to bottle them and they can take them home with them for a commemorative uh, event at Oak Mountain Basically, that's kind of the, the beginning of what you want to do. Sometimes you may have a wine that the color isn't what you want. Well, then you can add another wine that has a little more color into it, just to maybe lift the color up a little bit and help the, the appearance of the wine. What we have tonight for you is three different wines, which are pretty much a common Bordeaux blend. We've got Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, and Merlot. Real easy to work with. Each wine is going to have its own distinctive character. Just looking across the table at the clear bottles, I can see, you know, one's a lot darker than the rest of the wine, one's a little lighter than the rest of the wine, so you can play with the color, you can see how that's going to work. Sometimes, uh, this one you may say, oh, this one's a little too tannic, but this one's kind of soft. Well, then you blend the two together, and then you come up with a wine that fits your palate as to where you want it to be as far as tannic or soft. That's the whole idea of blending wines. We're trying to make, you, you take something that may need a little correcting and then you use another wine to do it. Because they're all wines are different. We, we've done really expanded wine tasting classes where I give you all the chemistry of the wines and then you can look at all the different acid levels, alcohol levels, and I mean, if a wine is, there again, if you have one wine that, that came out a little bit too high in alcohol, as a winemaker, then I would blend in a wine that's lower in alcohol to try to even them out to, to get the wine where you want it. So that's kind of what we're going to do tonight, playing with these. Although most of these wines are pretty, they're all right around 13, 9, 14 percent, so there's no real high alcohol wines. Or, and you'll see there's really none of them are any clunkers or... <laughs> I think that's up to us to decide. <laughs> but the, the way we were going to do this is we work with this one little graduated cylinder. We used to do the classes with larger ones, but everybody got pretty tanked up and couldn't, <laughs> couldn't find their way out the door. So we found this is better because this is just one taste. I mean, basically, this is just one taste. This is 10 mils of wine. And if you look at it, it's a little hard in this darkness, but you can see there's a four and a five and, and so on. So based on these 10 mils, this is 100%. You, if 10 times 10 is 100. So whatever you put in here, if you put in four mils, then that's 40% of your wine. If you put in five mils, 50%, and so on. We've got a little pipette that works so that you can, so you can take the three different wines that you're going to be working with, which is your Cab, Merlot, Cab Franc, oh, okay. you can take a little bit out, put it in your pipette, then you can taste it in your, you should have a fourth glass to, to do your tasting it. So then you can keep working with your formulas. Uh, you have a you have a worksheet. And if I can get that Merlot. See if I know what you need. Yes. Are these all wines that you? Yeah. These are all 2010 wines. None of these wines have been bottled yet. Uh, they'll probably be bottled in the next few weeks. Okay, what you want to do is, is check each wine, smell it, taste it, look at the clarity, look at the color. You'll want to take notes on those wines for yourself. So then you'll, you can rate each wine, kind of pick out the characteristics of that wine. Do I like, what do you like about each one of the wines? Does this one have a little bit too much oak? This one's maybe fruitier? 
then you use all that information that you gather by tasting wines to determine what you want to do in your blend. Wayne, you notice we don't pour that much. <laughs> so then when you get ready to do your blend, you can just take your pipe back and then you put in the amount that you want to tr start off with. You've got to work here. Yeah. Once you get your blend, you pour that in the glass, you taste it, if you like it, it's, it's one taste, you can smell it, taste it, if you like it, that's cool, but then you can keep working on it. Zach Hasmar, I'm the executive sous chef with uh, Temecula Catering. Tonight we're doing an event for uh, about 30 people. It's a, a day after Valentine's Day event. It's a wine blending. Um, we're also doing a few courses this evening. So we started off with a little uh, amuse bouche um, that had a little uh, pesto and oven dried tomato terrine. And then we were moving on to our ahi tuna. If you want to, maybe if you can see over here, you can grab one. So this is our compressed watermelon with ahi tuna, tempura fried nori, and black caviar. The ahi tuna has a little sweet Thai chili and sesame vinaigrette drizzled over the top. All right, so then we'll be moving on to the next course, the uh, iceberg wedge salad. Uh, that one's comprised of uh, the iceberg lettuce, uh, grape tomatoes, artichoke hearts, and uh, little blue cheese crumbles over the top with a homemade blue cheese dressing. Uh, finally, we'll be doing a uh, sous vide New York steak for the entree, uh, roasted heirloom baby carrots, and a potato palm puree, and moving into a chocolate lava cake and chocolate covered strawberries for dessert. So thank you very much. Give us a call anytime you need an event done. The Temecula Valley wine area is easy to find. Just exit either going north or south on the 15 at the Temecula Parkway. That's State Road 79. Follow the road eastbound till you get to Anza Road. And there you're going to make a left-hand turn or be heading north. Head on Anza Road till you see a stop sign. And that's De Portola Road. There you're going to make a right-hand turn and you're going to be headed eastbound. And this is where you're going to find all the wineries on this road.